Medication cost does have a significant impact on the aging population. In a population that doesn't have income for, or has a fixed income, is, not, is often not working anymore, the, every, every dollar matters. And so, for example, Medicare covering 80% of the cost, there is still co-pays and there are still costs that are tied to every prescription. Um, patients who also have Medicaid have more coverage, more assistance, and there are some uh, also drug programs that patients can sign up for, uh, different, different insurance programs that patients can sign up for that have more, more additional prescription coverage. Um, these are things that really do impact a patient's ability to be adherent to medication plans in addition to uh, the complications of organizing uh, medications during the time of day, during the frequency. Uh, this is something that a geriatrician, that a primary care provider does need to consider. It's important to recognize that the cost of medications is pretty nebulous. It really, physicians often don't know exactly based on the, it depends on the insurance of the patient, it depends on the pharmacy that they're going to. Um, it, there's many different factors that will change the cost. For patients who are struggling with covering the cost of their medications, it's important to involve a social worker, if there is one available, to really help with identifying are there drug prescription, are there medication coverage plans or waivers that can be applied for, or different pharmacies or different ways to help support the patient who financially may not be able to afford the medication at hand. It's really important for geriatricians to examine the list of medications. For many of our patients who have been who are older, they've acquired more comorbidities, more, more medications along their lifetime, and at some point they may have acquired more medications than they actually need. So the concept of deprescribing and also only prescribing what is necessary, avoiding polypharmacy in the interaction of multiple medications uh, in, uh, in a negative way often is something that geriatricians need to be, and primary care providers need to be on top of. Uh, there is a Beers criteria of of potentially inappropriate medications. A uh, new issue came out in 2019. It is a list of medications that are categorized in uh, groups of what is not recommended, what is potentially inappropriate, and different, different classes of medicines for providers to look at to see if this is something that they should be prescribing for their patient, depending on the patient's health status. Uh, this is something that the American Geriatric Society has come up with, and it's something that we would encourage primary care providers to use, uh, use all the time. When patients get admitted into the hospital, we often do, as geriatricians who are on the inpatient service, we do have many, many times we make recommendations for discontinuing medications. Um, in the geriatrics clinic, we are often revising, reconciling medication lists on a daily basis, so there is we see it less so in, in our particular clinic, but certainly it's it's a common thing for uh, it's a common thing for for patients who are older to have multiple medications built up, especially if they have more more than one specialist who may be prescribing, and then the lists need to be repeatedly reconciled. Perhaps the patient or their family for, uh, don't really have a don't remember, and then all of a sudden you have more than one medication on the list that is that is not necessary. So it's important for the provider to really examine the list. It is a common risk the older the, with our older patients to have overprescribing um, and unnecessary medications. It's also important to examine some protocol lists where a list of medications may be administered to a patient, but to also realize if it's an older patient, perhaps all of those standard medications may not apply for, for the for the older age group, and so you really need to examine, for example, Benadryl, uh, something that we don't recommend for our older patients, but it is something that's commonly prescribed for uh, the average population for allergies as an antihistamine. For our older patients who see multiple specialists and more than one physician, and this is something that's very common in New York City because there are so many physicians, uh, it is something that we can't get away with, so this is something that we have to acknowledge. For our older patients or for patients who have difficulty coordinating or organizing their medical care or remembering what changes have been made, it is a tricky thing for the primary care provider to navigate. So it is very important for the primary care provider, the geriatrician, to have 
a good communication with these specialists in order to really maintain an accurate medication list so that the whole analysis of polypharmacy, deprescribing, inappropriate medications can, can correctly be reconciled. It is a really common struggle for geriatricians to work with patients who have a difficult time adhering to their medications. Even the younger population, at times taking a medication three times a day, or remembering it and changing around, is difficult. So if you do, if you're an older person and you have some memory challenges, then obviously it will be it will be more difficult. So working with the pharmacists, there are, I mean, there are prescription, there are pill boxes that are by the week. There are even pill boxes by the entire month. If you have a nice pharmacist, there may be the option of blister packing. Uh, so that the patient can have can just open up one packet and receive all their morning medications at once, their afternoon and their evening. There are some pharmacists who will actually put each individual the pills into pill a giant pill box container for the entire month. There are home delivery services where the pharmacy may be able to deliver the packages every month. There's a lot of mail order pharmacies as well. Uh, pharmacists themselves are an underutilized resource, so patients can actually go to the pharmacist and receive counseling and instruction on what medications uh, do what and how is the, the best to take them. Obviously, the geriatrician would be able to go over this as well in the clinic. However, for patients who may require multiple reminders, it might be a good idea to have them establish a nice, a good relationship with their pharmacist. In New York, where I practice, there are many, many pharmacies, so it's very easy to find a variety of of services that they will offer. So it's good to explore the different choices for the patient if the current one is not working, to perhaps enlist the help of a social worker or a care coordinator who may investigate to find the best pricing, the best options for pill management, the best kind of instruction programs, um, and perhaps if they have home delivery or mail order, that may also be an asset.